What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome to episode 4 of our Unity tutorial. Uh, in this episode we're going to import some assets into our scene, including a first person controller to give us some um, more movability in our levels. And then after that I think we're going to start creating some landscapes and give us more room to work with, but for now we're going to jump over to the asset store and we're going to search for standard assets. And it's this first one here by Unity Technologies. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we're going to hit import. And this has a bunch of really great assets um, and prefabs that help uh, making the repetitive things in your games and the mechanics that we use in most of our games a little less uh, repetitive and having to recreate everything we can start with a nice template um, and use them by modifying the assets rather than having to start from scratch with everything we can be a little bit more creative now All right, so they just finished downloading, so we're gonna jump back to our scene. We're gonna go into our new standard assets folder. We're gonna go to, I believe, characters. We're gonna go to first person prefabs, and we're gonna drag first person controller which has our first person controller script, our character controller, a rigid body, and an audio source all built in to one prefab. So we're gonna drag that into our scene and place it on the floor so it's not stuck inside of it and hit play and see what happens. So now we can look around, walk, and even interact with these um, prefabs. Well, not prefabs yet, these um, physics materials. So we have a cube, a sphere, and a cylinder that not only react to each other, but react to the player as well. Alright. So we don't really have too much room to do anything. Um, it's a very small square we have here in our plane. And expanding our plane um, to a much larger area isn't really going to change the effect. It's just going to make it seem like we have a larger plane. We need to make this actually interesting. So what we want to do is we want to create a landscape. So we're going to go to 3D object, create 3D object, and go to terrain. And here we have a much larger moldable terrain. And I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And I'm going to move. Ooh, I'm getting some lag here as it renders. I'm going to move this terrain to the center of our not necessarily the perfect center but basically where our game was I want my terrain to be and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here alright so now we have our objects above a terrain we're going to go ahead and click on this plane and delete that we don't need that anymore but we do want to click on our terrain and make sure that we have yep a terrain collider and our terrain molding tools we can also add um, a ground asset all right so it turned off auto generate lighting because it was uh, taking far too long and i ended up playing with the settings a little bit because it was taking so long but anyway um we want to go back and um basically fill in our floor texture our terrain and give it some um, 
texture, so it looks like grass. Um, not real texture, but a 2D texture on the floor terrain. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, edit terrain layers and create a layer. Um, so you go to create layer. And then you can choose a texture that you'd like to create. If you type in grass, you'll actually grass, see grass hill, albedo, and choose that one. And you can use your um, painting tool uh, up here to actually paint that texture on our um, floor. So let me actually generate some lighting really quick. Oh, sorry. Um, I can actually stop that. I realized I wasn't painting it because I didn't select it. So when you actually select... Oh no, why did I start the lighting? <laughs> so when you actually select the layer, then it lets you um, paint the terrain onto it. So I'm going to choose that and then I can paint the terrain. And if I hit play... We'll see that we're now on a floor with those objects and we are interacting with them. So great, now we have this area painted, but this obviously isn't um, all we want to do. We want to make it the entire area painted as well as add some hills and maybe rocky areas and things like that. So to do that, we just go to edit terrain layers and um, we can add and remove layers. So we can go ahead and um, create a layer and this time choose uh, grass rock and I can start adding by clicking on this one some rocky area and you can change the size of your brushes and everything um, if you change your brush size here you can make it very small and add like a pathway that kind of thing and then um, once you have the setup how you want obviously you're not going to know exactly how you want to draw it yet but we can actually edit the um, terrain itself by going to raise or lower terrain and you'll see that we actually have um, Ooh, that's a little too powerful. Let's control Z that. <laughs> control Z for undo. And then we're going to go to raise or lower. We'll click on this one. The brush size is small. Let's make the opacity kind of low. There we go. That is still very, very powerful. Let's see. There we go, we'll change it to 5.6. And we can start drawing some mountains here. And why am I going around in a circle? Well, because I want my, um, my area to contain my player. I don't want the player to leave this area. So I'm making some uh, mountains around it so that he can't get past um, unless he goes the way that I want him to go, for example, through this pathway. So it kind of leads the player on in a, in a certain direction. So that's why I'm doing it this way, but obviously you can do it however you like. Um, I don't like how that turned out. Let's do this. I want to lower this guy a little bit. And you can lower by use, holding shift as you... Um, create these so we can actually make a larger brush size and make a smaller opacity and kind of raise and lower different areas oops that way we have some real hills I can make the size smaller and kind of change stuff this way and then we can repaint these mountains and hills so that we're using the proper things. So let's go ahead and go to paint texture and I'm going to use this to paint the mountains. So I'll make it a slightly smaller brush and I'll paint the mountains.
make sure you have your opacity up as well. I'm actually going to zoom out all the way up here so I can easily do this. So all the mountains are going to be that rock and then all the grass area is going to be grass. And then we can make a mix and make it opacity down to like maybe 17 or something and add some areas that are a little oops a little mixed a little patchy maybe and then we can make our specific roads and such like I was gonna make a road through here so we can go through and create that road there we go so now that we have our little mountain range and area we can hit play and it looks like a much more believable game world at least for our sense we haven't added um, actual grass objects or um, any kind of special treatment for these objects yet but we can make this look a lot nicer but for now we have created our own game world a pretty convincing one so yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to stop this here, and have a great day. Peace.